The Cold War caused many people to do crazy things. We got close to nuking the world over a few times. We threw objects into space until one of them finally landed on the moon. Then, of course, there were the countless proxy wars, all to determine which superpower nation was the better one. For the United States on the home front, however, there was also huge social change. After World War II, there were people looking to bring things back to the simple ways they were before the war, but there was honestly no turning back at this point. The United States may have been seen as the leader of the free world, but it had its problems. Any problems it had meant the entire world was aware of it. The Soviets, for example, would mock the United States for calling itself a leader in free democracy when Jim Crow and local terrorist groups like the KKK were preventing minorities from exercising their rights. In addition, the idealism that the United States was the best of the best inspired many of the younger generations to push for social change to better reflect that. And in the late 1950s and 60s, it all came to a head. You had the civil rights movement for African Americans and other minorities. You had the anti-war movement. But one other movement during this time would start in 1969 in New York City thanks to the Stonewall Riots. Meet Joseph McCarthy. Joseph McCarthy was a senator who claimed that communists had infiltrated the government and were trying to ruin American way of life. This led to a huge national paranoia, and it led to many people being blacklisted, fired, or imprisoned. The House of Un-American Activities, or HUAC, was formed, which is kind of a horrifying name for an institution if you think about it, and they investigated many people for any signs of being different. Communists without saying were targeted as well as other political groups such as anarchists, but it didn't stop there. Today a huge topic of discussion seems to be call-out culture. Someone said something a few years ago and they're removed from Twitter over it and maybe lose a movie contract or something. During this time, imagine that, but times 10 and the consequences were far worse. Any celebrity that questioned a societal norm or an action of the United States could have been a suspect. McCarthy even accused Eisenhower of being a communist, which was frankly absurd. One of the groups on McCarthy and Huack's lists were perverts, which included many things, but especially included LGBT people. They thought that the fact that they were LGBT somehow had a security risk for the government. This seems hilarious in hindsight, but back then they were enough of a marginalized group that people believed it. While being LGBT wasn't legal by any means, McCarthyism led to more strict crackdowns. In just three years, between 1947 and 1950, 4,380 people suspected of being LGBT were kicked from the military, while another 420 were fired from government jobs. The FBI also began to keep lists of known homosexuals and their friends, but these actions also led to local city governments to enact stricter anti-LGBT policies. Police forces would sweep the streets of any meetups of LGBT people, which back then were restricted to mostly places such as gay bars. They'd even sweep neighborhoods and parks of any suspected people or activities, even if they hadn't engaged in a relationship. They also added homosexuality as a disorder to the DSM in 1952. It was a very dark time for LGBT people during the 50s and 60s, but it didn't stop them from making groups to try and campaign for social change or from having secret meetups. In New York City, there was a bar called the Stonewall Inn. It was a place for LGBT people where they could socialize, have a drink, and dance. The fact that it allowed LGBT dances made it the most famous gay bar in the area. New York City conducted police raids for gay bars, but the Stonewall had an interesting advantage. Due to the nature of the bar being, well, illegal, it was actually financed by the Mafia, and thanks to the Mafia, they were able to bribe police members who knew about the nature of the bar to ignore it. Raids would still happen, as they had to, but rather than closing down the bar, they were merely looking for suspicious characters. The Mafia didn't care about that part because they weren't a fan of the LGBT community either, but it made them money. When a police raid happened, they'd enter the establishment, turn on the lights, and arrest anyone who didn't have an ID on them. In addition, if someone was wearing drag or any clothing deemed not normal for your gender, you were also arrested. Women, if they didn't have three different articles of feminine clothing, were arrested too. For Stonewall, the constant raids went on for about three years until one day on June 28th of 1969, exactly 50 years ago from the date of this video. At 1.20 a.m., the police conducted their raid and seized some illegal alcohol as the bar didn't have a proper liquor license, and then they began arresting people, as usual. However, their patrol wagon hadn't arrived yet, which meant all they could do was line up the arrested people outside the bar while they waited, so naturally a crowd arose around the situation. By the time the first police wagon arrived, the crowd was ten times larger than the number arrested, and most of them were patrons of the bar, so it got really tense and quiet. The police then began to handle the arrested harsher, and that riled up the crowd. Some in the crowd saying, we shall overcome, others threw pennies or empty bottles at the police wagon. 
But the final spark was when a lesbian, who is mostly believed to have been Stormé de Larvery, was arrested by the police and resisted arrest. Eventually, when she complained her handcuffs were too tight, the policeman responded by whacking her on the head with his baton. Then she was picked up and heaved into the car after shouting, why don't you guys do something? Once that happened, the crowd went berserk. The 10 police officers there now had an angry crowd of 500 to 600 people. As they tried to restrain the crowd, a few got arrested escaped. Vehicles left the scene and 10 police officers barricaded themselves inside the Stonewall Inn. Years of harassment, arrests, and mistreatment were built up and it was now let out at this moment. The windows of the bar were broken and things were being thrown in at the barricaded police officers. Riot control reinforcements eventually arrived to rescue the besieged police officers. Few of them were described to have chased away some of the rioters, only to have the rioters regroup and chase them back, back and forth. Eventually, the police altogether retreated and were chased for a few blocks. The riots continued into the next night, police clashing with the rioters. Eventually, by 4 a.m. on June 29th, the street battling had stopped. The news naturally spread word of these shocking events, and it inspired many people. The Mattachine Society, a pro-LGBT group, marched in front of Independence Hall in Philadelphia and had been doing so for a few years. But this time on July 4th of 1969, during that march, many of the LGBT couples there held hands, which at the time was really shocking. Stonewall riots also inspired many LGBT people and groups across the United States and around the world. Unfortunately, raiding gay bars didn't stop after the riots, and for the state of New York, homosexuality wouldn't be decriminalized until 1980. But in 1970, in remembrance of the riots, LGBT members organized the first Pride March. That's why June is considered LGBT month. Fifty years later, things have significantly changed. People born in more recent times might not have realized how horrible it was for LGBT people back then. Frankly, it's nice today that I can love my boyfriend and not be thrown in jail over it. But just like with any social issue, there's always some progress left to be made. Ultimately, the Stonewall Riots are an important part of history, along with the other major civil rights movements of the 1960s. I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time.